hello welcome back to my channel this is the psychic scene with jennifer jean so today we have a special holiday edition of the psychic scene and i'm going to talk about the runes um, it is a form of divination that is used quite a bit uh, i haven't really used it a lot in my readings but i want to share a little bit about its origin and how you can do readings with it today so rune simply means secret or whisper and I like this because it adds to the it adds to the mystery of it and makes it more enticing for what we call the querent, the person who's asking the question. So the history of the rune is basically the runes are just an alphabet and um, it has its origins in the Etruscan, Latin, some Hebrew, um, but it's most commonly associated with uh, Germanic Norse culture, the Vikings and the symbols that you see. Um, and it was, it started around the second century and was used a lot through the 17th century. And this spread throughout Europe and Russia due to the silk traders. And the runes were often read left to right or right to left, depending on what culture. I mean, you hear a lot about uh, runes in the Scandinavian culture. So it depended on what area that they settled in. And the runes depict nature and animals. So when I do my sample readings, you're gonna see a few examples of this. Runes are often difficult to interpret because there were a lot of hidden messages, uh, the mysteries, and they made kind of a puzzle or game out of it. So kind of like the Bible, we don't really know the origins exactly and how it came to be or what the mess, who the messages came from. But I like the idea that it's mysterious. The most common edition of the runes is called the Elder Futhark. And that's 24 letters as opposed to English language, which is 26 letters. And they grouped it into three rows of eight. They called it at. Um, and this depicted the practical, the psychological, and the relationship to one another. So runes can be made out of a lot of different things. A lot of times you'll see stones. Uh, I've got mine here. I got these in Iceland. I was in Reykjavik for a while and I don't remember the name of the shop now. I wish I did because I could tell you where to get them. But these are made of wood and I'll just hold a few up. You can see that it's etched in uh, that they burnt to make the, the letters. So they're very nice and it came in this white cloth and you want to read your runes on a white cloth. I don't know why, but that's just what they say. So it kind of clears the mind, I guess. Okay, so when you when you read the runes, you really need to know this part, this is very important. It is not about fortune telling. And I know a lot of people want predictions, they want to know what's going to happen, but I think the main gist of the runes is it is the link between the conscious and the unconscious. And what it is, is the best possible outcome. You're gonna see the best possible outcome from what is happening right now. And that's the way I like to do my readings anyway. I don't always like to do predictions because we know things can change and nothing is written in blood. So I think with the runes, we'll really remember to kind of keep it in the here and now and just see what the message is that they want to impart to us. So how do you lay these out when you read them? Some people will um, lay them out in uh, the uh, same formation as the tarot, like the Celtic cross. Um, I like to do, I always like to do a three rune or three card spread, the past, present, and future. That always seems to get everything you need to know from it. A lot of times back in the day, they would just throw the runes on the ground and there is a certain randomness about the runes. They like to see where they fall and how they relate to one another. And it's really up to the reader to interpret how this will happen. So if you wanna do a random, you can just throw them on the ground and see what comes up. And there's a lot of really complicated spreads but I like to keep it simple. Um, there's also a theory about the blank rune. So there's 24 here in this set, and there's a theory about the blank rune, which is kind of like the wild card or the joker. And I think that started in the 1980s. There was a certain person who put that in their runes, and they really found that um, that's not keeping with the purity of the tradition. So, I mean, if you want to, you can create a blank rune if you want to make your own set, but I would say maybe leave it out so you can get the authenticity of this practice. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a sample reading, and it's my gift to you, one of the gifts I'm going to give you today. So I want you to think of a number from one to three, and just let it come to you, whatever comes in your mind, and I'm going to pick a rune for one, two, or three, and that will be your personal message today. So if you picked rune number one, you received this rune, and it's called Sawulo, or the sun. It's a sign of luck and happiness, and it's also the sign of entrepreneurship that leads to fame and fortune. It represents pride and setting noble objectives. And this is a powerful and warm rune, and you'll have to enjoy bathing in her rays. So a very positive rune overall. And by the way, it really doesn't matter if the runes are upside down or right set up. Actually, with this rune, it wouldn't really matter. Some of them, it wouldn't matter the um, meaning if it was reversed. But just so you know, you can just have it in the upright position and that will be fine. So this is called Sawulo. If you chose rune number two, you chose Perthro. And the interpretation of this rune is that it is a dice. It stands for destiny, and it says that everything we do has already been decided. So if the dice is rolled, it looks like luck will decide, but is it really so? So I believe this rune has to do with predestination, but also our own free will. It is the evolution of something and even the beginning of something new. And this rune is covered with secrets. So if you chose this rune, it's called Perthro. If you chose rune number three, this is called Laguz, and this represents water. Everything that's about feelings and life force. It's a sign of something hidden and its revelation and the consequences that follow. It also represents the subconscious and the fear of something that lies hidden in the deep waters. It stands for life itself and great but hidden talents. So perhaps it has something to do with a metamorphosis of sorts. This is called Laguz. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this rune reading. And if you would like to work with me or get a reading of your own, I can be reached at www.readingsbyjenniferjean.com. Anyway, don't go anywhere. I have a special holiday treat for you at the end. Enjoy. Thank you so much for watching my video and to express my gratitude I'm going to play Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas on the French Horn. Enjoy. <laughs>